A popper is one of the best midday summertime when the sun's out baits there is. A popper imitates a bluegill and a lot of times the bluegill actually get positioned where you want them to catch them on a popper once the sun gets out. You get shade lines that kind of congregates the fish and they'll bite it just as good at 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the day as they will at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Popper is one of my favorite baits to throw in the hot summertime midday time. Popper is one bait but it's really three baits in one. So this Yozuri 3DB popper I like to use, it works really well all three ways. The traditional way you know of a popper is just your bloop, stop, bloop, stop. And that is a very productive way to fish a popper, especially maybe in Florida or when the fish are just, sometimes they like that. But that is not the traditional way that, or the technical way I like to fish it. This is, that's just the what kind of most people think of when you're fishing a popper. The way I like to fish a popper is actually with really fast, short twitches. And when you do the fast, short twitches, you can actually get two different actions out of it. So you got your small bloops, just this really quick bloops, where it just kind of sprays water. And it's kind of erratic, kind of walks, kind of doesn't really walk, just sprays a bunch of small bubbles. And then the third way you can fish this Yozuri popper is actually, it still pops some, but more of a walking action. And to get that, you do more of a slack line jerk, and it'll actually walk kind of like a walking bait rather than pop. So the reason a popper is so good is because maybe I throw my bait out and I'm in a shadow and I'm doing the quick bloops like I tr traditionally fish it and I see a fish behind it looking at it. Well then I could stop it and do the single bloops. And then if he doesn't like the single bloops, the fish starts chasing it, I can do the kind of walking action to try to get him to eat it. So it's really three baits in one, and the reason I prefer a popper is because I can alternate. The reason it's such a productive bait is because in the hot summer, a lot of fish, they do go out deep. They go get on brush piles, they go do things like that. But a lot of the fish eat bluegills. And bluegills, some go out to the brush, but a lot of them stay on the bank all summer. But the kind of bank running, popper, topwater bite in the summer is kind of something that comes and goes. It's specifically good around full moons. So that's always the best time because there's a lot more brim up shallow, a lot more brim on bed, but it's not just, you know, a set in the book, only do it around full moons. Kind of one of those things that'll work really good for a couple days or week. And then you might not see as many or catch as many up shallow for a little while, but it's something I keep honest, literally from late May all the way till October when it starts getting fall time because fish will show up on the bank, just a lot of fish will get up shallow. And then as it gets later in the summer, the water quality gets pretty crappy out deep on a lot of lakes. So a lot of fish will go up shallow because they can breathe more effectively. In the summer, it's, it's pretty random, honestly, throw it, throwing the popper down the bank. You're just covering a lot of water, but there's kind of high percentage areas that you want to always focus on. And some, something like that dock walkway right there, is always a good place. You kind of imagine, you know, we've all brim fished off the lake. Where would the bluegills be? And bluegills always, you see them, you know, around boat ramp sitting in the shade under the dock. A boat ramp itself is always a good area. But your targeting areas bluegills are. So any overhanging trees, this lake has a ton of seawalls. Seawalls are good, but you want kind of a little shade line on it. Like that dock walkway casts a good shadow that I focus on when I'm throwing. And just the exact same as like a tree, a tree overhanging, a bush, Something like this simple little small bush hanging in the water right here will make a shade line that's just a likely target. You're, kind of, you're throwing the popper covering a lot of water, but you're fishing specific places as you're going that the fish are looking for those bluegills, those summertime bluegills, they're still up shallow. So when it comes to popper fishing in the summer, like I mentioned, you wanna be throwing in shade and like crevices is the best way to put it, like dock walkways where bushes overhang, things like that. So you really, really need to be able to cast it where the fish live. If, this bait, it's not a super heavy bait, so it's not very easy to throw. So my setup for throwing this popper is very, very specific for doing that because of where you need to put the bait. So you need a really, really soft tip rod. I use my jerk bait rod in my Cobb series, Century, in the Cobb series of arc rods, Century, and it's a medium, but with a regular tip. So the tip really, really loads up with this lighter bait. Because if the tip doesn't load up, you can't like roll cast, underhand, pitch even this popper in those shady spots. And I always, with most top waters, but especially this popper, I like 30 pound Yozuri Super Braid. And I've experimented with putting a monofilament leader on between my popper, just a really short one between the popper and the braid. 
but I don't like that for one reason. If you use a loop knot or something, maybe, but I don't like to tie a loop knot. So with this braid, because it comes through the water real effectively, you can get those, those three actions I mentioned, the walking, the blooping, and then the quick bloops. The walking action is much, much easier to get with straight braid rather than monofilament. It's hard to get most poppers to do that walking action really, really well when it's not on straight braid. And if they're coming up to eat a popper, if they're up there shallow eating bluegills, they're feeding. So the braid really, really doesn't make much of a difference. But this is the traditional color I throw. This is just a bluegill color. This one's beat up. You can see how many fish I've caught on this one. And this is kind of my go-to in a bluegill pattern. But on a lot of really, really clear lakes, if they're up there cruising and it's just too clear, I like to go to a more translucent bluegill. This is a 3D RX popper bluegill. It's the same profile. It's just this natural kind of clear color. A clear will get bites a lot better or they won't follow it sometimes if you got ultra, ultra clear water. I only do that on, you know, specific lakes such as like a Lewis Smith Lake or here in South Carolina, like Kiwi, somewhere like that where it's really, really clear. Sometimes this natural, super clear finish works better. And it, you notice on my popper here, always want a feathered treble hook. Feathered treble hooks are good on top bars in general, but I think they're essential with a popper. Cause when you see those bluegills up there shallow, you can kind of see their tail glowing. The filaments in the feather really, really looks like that to the bass. And a lot of times they'll kind of run up on it and you gotta change your, your action, do that walking or blooping and change it as the fish are following it. And I think that popper gets a lot more fish to eat it. But that's the setup to get your bait in those tight places. I use a gravity reel because it handles light baits really well. Seven to one ratio, like a faster reel because it's a popper and you don't really need to slow it down. So fish it quick, 30 pound braid, light action rod, something you can really, really roll cast that popper under in those shady areas.